Learn more about the life-saving benefits of organ and tissue donation up next on the Giblin Report. Welcome to the Giblin Report. I'm Assemblyman Tom Giblin, representing the 34th Legislative District, which includes Clifton, East Orange, Montclair, and Orange. On today's segment, I am pleased to welcome Elise Glennon, Vice President and Chief Administrative Officer, and, De and Denise Peoples, Community Educator, both from the New Jersey Sharing Network. Welcome Elise and Denise to the Giblin Report. Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Elise. Tell us somewhat uh, about the New Jersey Sharing Network and what the concept behind the organization is. Yes, thank you for having us here today and giving us this platform to talk about organ and tissue donation. Uh, New Jersey Sharing Network is the organization in New Jersey responsible for saving lives through organ and tissue donation. We have a highly trained clinical team who responds to calls from hospitals with potential uh, organ and tissue donors. And they work through that entire process to determine suitability and to match donors with recipients straight through the surgery, the transplant process, and taking care of the families all along the way. At least there must be a variation in terms of people who need uh, organ donations and the people are out there that are willing to do so or families that are willing to do so. Uh, how long is your waiting list, so to speak? Uh, nationally, the waiting list is about 115,000 people currently waiting a life-saving transplant. In New Jersey, it's about 4,000 residents. We just broke under 4,000 residents, actually, in New Jersey waiting for a transplant. And right here in this area, uh, there's about 500 people just in the, in the Essex County communities. And what kind of uh, organ transplants would they be looking for? I mean, the variation of heart and lungs and... Right, heart. People can be uh, waiting for a heart transplant, lungs, kidneys, pancreas, uh, intestines, and liver transplants. And how do, uh, first of all, individuals get registered that they're willing to be an organ uh, donor? I know there's a, a, a sp space on your driver's license for that, right? Yeah, actually, there, it used to be you can only register through your driver's license, but now through modern technology, we've made it even easier to register. So you could still register in your driver's license. You could also go right to our website and click the link that you want to register to be an organ donor. That takes less than 60 seconds. And most recently, about a year ago, uh, we partnered nationally with iPhone. Um, and there is now an app on your iPhone where you can register to be an organ donor through the health app. Um, Android is, is coming out with that next. And that really takes about 10 seconds, a quick click of the button. Have you found your numbers increasing you know, with an with a, a educational campaign? Yes, absolutely. In fact, organ donation over the last five years in New Jersey has increased 38%. Uh, last year in 2017, we had the most organ donors we've ever had in a single year uh, here in New Jersey. Uh, thanks to a lot of things, public education programming like this, getting the word out. Um, I wanted to mention though too, when you register to be a donor, we always encourage people to still talk to your family about your wishes. Um, because when they are presented at the time of your passing with information that you may have been a registered donor and it comes as a shock to them, we don't need to add that additional burden. So we really encourage people to have a conversation with their families and let them know their wishes to be an organ donor. You know, Denise uh, Peoples, how did you get involved with the New Jersey Sharing Network? Well, uh, soon after I was blessed with a double lung transplant 11 years ago, um, I wanted to find out about the organization that kind of took care of everything here in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, went on the web and looked and said, oh, it's the New Jersey Sharing Network. I was at Kinko's one day and there was a young lady there making copies. And I looked over her shoulder and saw the New Jersey Sharing Network emblem <laughs> and became a volunteer. Where did you have your surgery performed? At New York Presbyterian. And it's 11 years. 11 years, yes. Yeah. 
So yeah. you can speak with authority that, oh, yes. uh, you know, you're, you're, I guess you'd call a success story. Oh, yes, definitely. That, you know, it's no greater gift than the gift of life is being an organ donor. You can't beat it. <laughs> uh, recently, I heard, you know, a speaker from your organization talk that eight people can be helped uh, from one, one human being. Maybe you could explain that to our viewers. Sure. Um, first of all, organ donation is very complicated. Not everybody who registers to be an, an organ donor can be. Uh, there are many medical reasons why somebody may not be healthy enough to be a donor. So what most people don't understand... What would that be, like some, with some type of uh, ailments, diabetes or cancer or things like that? What, what would correct. Be Th those, for sure. Um, the blood type or anything like that enter into that? Uh, not usually. It's usually the cause and manner of death. So in order to be an organ donor, you, your heart needs to be pumping blood to the organs to keep them functioning, keep them working, and available for transplant. Uh, so in order to be an organ donor, someone needs to have, die of a traumatic brain injury, being in the hospital and be declared brain dead. Uh, less than 1% of deaths uh, happen in this manner. So right off the bat, very few people can be an organ donor. Um, you can, one donor can save up to eight lives if we can recover healthy heart, lungs, all of the organs we just discussed before. Is there any time element, you know, in terms of, you know, when they're deemed uh, eligible to be, you know, a, a organ donor before yes. the you know, surgery is done? Yes, it's, it ha everything happens very quickly. Once a patient is declared uh, brain dead in a hospital, all organs begin to lose function relatively quickly. Um, so we need to move to the operating room after, of course, we've spoken with the family to recover organs relatively quickly. Once the organs are recovered, most of them need to be transplanted within four to six hours. So it is at the sharing network where we coordinate all of the transfer of the organs, the transportation, whether we need uh, ground transportation or air transportation. We need to quickly get the recipient to the transplant center to receive prep and receive the organs. And we need to get the surgeons in place. So there's a lot of coordination that happens relatively quickly. And how quickly. do you stay in touch with the, the donor? I mean, I guess with the cell phone or a beeper or something like that? The the, the recipient? Yeah, that's what I meant, the uh, recipient. Um, we, our staff in our call center communicates with the surgeons of the patients on the waiting list. Um, and they offer the organs to that surgeon. Um, then they communicate via the telephone and we get the surgeons there. I, I assume this has kind of evolved over time with the New Jersey Sharing Network. What, you know, what's some of the more complicated, you know, transplants that you have? have done, I mean, it's, you know, you know, you mentioned, Denise, you had lung transplant. It seemed to me that's, uh, you know, kind of complicated to put it mildly, you know, so, I mean. It, yes, it, it, the most resilient organ is the kidney. Most people on the waiting list, uh, about probably 80% of the waiting list is waiting for a kidney transplant. Kidneys are very resilient. When we recover kidneys, um, I mentioned before that most organs need to be transplanted within four to six hours, uh, but kidneys can stay on a pump for up to 72 hours. So we can do additional work on a kidney, and a kidney can travel further. We have more time to get to the patient, and we typically don't, uh, we typically are able to recover kidney on every organ donor. Um, hearts and well, lungs are more rare. Would you know, for rare. example, if somebody had ki kidney issues, would there be a tendency to be on dialysis also? I mean, uh, On the patient side? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, typically a, a someone on the kidney patient waiting list is currently on dialysis. Not always, not always, but uh, typically patients will go on dialysis first while they're waiting for a kidney yeah. transplant. Yeah. Uh, trying to get to the public, is there, you know, trepidation, resistance, you know, people just, you know, don't want to deal with the issue of, uh, you know, uh, dying or, you know, even the idea of, you know, making uh, donations, I mean, you know, the family, things like that. I mean, how, how do you get to people on you this? You know, I, I think it is very challenging to talk to people about death and dying. Generally, like you said, people don't want to talk about that. Um, so we have a variety of public education programs focusing on people of all different ages, different geographies, different backgrounds. Um, Denise is one of our uh, very special community educators who does this work day in and day out. And so I'd like her to, I think she can comment uh, on your question as well. Yes, we have a, a great program. Uh, one of the programs is going into the high schools. 
uh, those young people are making you know, decisions now, especially, especially their driver's license. Uh, we go to driver's ed classes. Uh, we speak to teachers' workshops so that the teachers will uh, be well informed uh, if asked the question from their students. And um, we bring the education to the schools so that the children will know. That's one of the ways. Do they need permission from the, you know, uh, their parents about this issue of signing up for organ donation? Uh, if they are... Uh, Under 18? Yes, if they're 18, they can. But we also have... Um, uh, on our website where if they are underage, they can say what their intent is. Of course, it's still the parents that make the final decision, but they can at least say, hey, mom, dad, this is what I want to do. And that's where talking to their families is most important. They come to mm -hmm. go to school one day, they find out about everything that we have to say about being an organ and tissue donor. They can go home and say, hey, this is what was presented at school, and I'm really interested in it. And that's where the conversation sometimes starts. But you, you find that the, the numbers have grown significantly nationally and in the state? Uh, yes, not only uh, here in New Jersey did organ donation have the highest numbers last year, but again, across the country. Um, the registry itself has stayed relatively flat um, nationwide, about 50% of people are registered organ donors. In New Jersey, the number is a little bit lower. We have about 33% of adults who are registered organ donors uh, in New Jersey. Um, there's a variety of people, uh, reasons rather, why people don't actually make the commitment to register to be a donor. One what, could be, what would they be? Uh, one could be education. We, mm -hmm. we find that a lot. People just don't know how to register. Um, Another is that they, you know, forget to register when they go to motor vehicle. They don't realize they could register easily online. What we do have in New Jersey is a high consent rate, meaning when someone passes, if they are not a registered organ donor, the family makes that decision. Maybe they, they had a conversation with their loved one. Maybe they just knew that their loved one was a very giving person and would like to save someone's life. And about 65% of the time, the family authorizes organ donation. So while the registry is low in New Jersey, New Jerseyans are very giving. Um, and like I said, about 65% of the time, we get a, an authorized organ donation. Do you make an effort to unite the recipient with the donors, family? I, I've noticed different articles or news reports uh, about that in, uh, in the past. Yeah, you know, one of the most rewarding... You know, do people like knowing that? In other words, like, they it gives them a certain amount of satisfaction uh, you know, to see that their uh, loved one's uh, tissue or, or organs were donated to help somebody else in distress? Yeah, one of the most uh, rewarding parts of our job probably is to be part of these reunions of families. Um, but I will say, everybody is on their own time frame. Some recipients want to meet the donor family right away. Some donor families want to meet the recipients right away. Others wait years. Uh, some recipients find, you uh, feel that they don't know how to thank the donor family. Some donor families just aren't ready to look the recipients in the eyes yet right away. Um, so every family is sort of on their own time frame. But when they do want to meet, we have a department that coordinates those meetings. By chance, Denise, did you meet your donors? Uh, family? Yes. Uh, no, I did not. I, what we do is um, when, as Elise said, when I'm ready to uh, meet that uh, family and they're ready to meet me, it's a connection that's made through the transplant centers. So I would send a letter just stating, you know, no geographic information, no name, anything. Just thank you so much. I'm doing well. Those kind of things. And you send it out. And you okay. hope you get a response. And I haven't yet. Okay. Well, say I'm a reluctant donor or potential donor. What, what's, what kind of pitch do you make to me about the uh, advantages of, uh, you know, registering, uh, you know, for the New Jersey Sharing Network? I mean, what, what do you say to some of your uh, potential donors? Well, usually we give them the information on how many lives one person can save uh, through tissue and, tissue and organ. Um, and we answer their questions. We, we dispel the myths because there are so many myths out there, assemblymen. People just don't know. And when they don't know, they can't make a conscious decision. And we just tell them there is no greater gift than the gift of life. Think about, you know, do you want to leave a legacy that outweighs any other thing that you can do. 
and we usually get a lot of questions and answers and people change their minds about things. One of the things we, we also say to people or remind people is that it, the need to have an organ transplant can happen to someone at any time. Uh, Denise was living a very, very healthy life when suddenly she discovered she needed a, a lung, double lung transplant. Um, so you never know, and we, we talk to people, if your brother, your sister, your mother, your father suddenly needed an organ transplant, wouldn't you hope that some family out there would say yes once their, if their loved one passed and no longer needed the organs. And usually when people start to personalize and internalize it, they, they recognize that yes, indeed, um, I, would want, I would want that for my family, so I would wanna do that for someone else. What tissue donation is a mm -hmm. lot of that earmarked for people primarily with you know, burn accidents or, you know, uh, yeah, so. tissue donation works a little bit uh, differently. Um, we talked before about the manner in which we need to recover organs. Uh, tissue donation, we can recover tissue, skin, bone, and cornea after a cardiac death, so it's a little bit different. Um, we do need to recover with, it, it's still a, a, a quick time frame to recover for skin, bone, and cornea, but yes, we can, we can use that skin for burn victims, for uh, breast reconstruction, uh, dental work, ACL repair, um, tissue donation, uh, one thing that's really unique about that or different from organ donation is that when we work with our tissue processors, that material can, has, a, has a shelf life, so to speak, of two to five years. That so long. When, yeah, so when we're talking to a donor family, what's really uh, additionally special about a tissue donor is that when the donor family wants to know how many people their loved one helped, Maybe the first few months we say 20 people, but then next year we give a report 30 people. Uh, one tissue donor can enhance the lives of over 75 people, uh, and that tissue donation can go across the country as well. How do you raise money, at least, for the operation of the Jersey Share Network? I, I, I received something in the mail about a, a walk you're doing in, in the spring. Uh, I may assume you get money from other resources. Yes, we are, the Sharing Network is a federally designated organization. Um, we have a foundation um, that raises money to further public education, to further research on organ donation, and to support uh, donor families. Um, we have a couple of walks every year. This year we have a walk on May 20th in Long Branch and June 3rd in New Providence, where we get about 10,000 people. 10,000 people. We get about 10,000 people come out. Um, it's an amazing celebration of life. There are donor families there wearing shirts with their loved one's picture on it. Uh, there are recipients touting uh, how their life has been saved and how they're living a beautiful life because of organ donation. How, how do people get additional knowledge about the, the walks that are coming up? Uh, is there an email or website or? Uh... Yes, there's a, the registration is now live at our website, njsharingnetwork.org. Um, you can register there as a team, as an individual. You can be a sponsor. Um, it, it's really just a wonderful day. There's a, there's a race for our runners. There's a walk. And the event site itself is a celebration. So a lot of people actually come out to celebrate and don't actually walk or run. Well, how do you get before the public? I mean, uh, you, you're as an educator, community educator, you're, I assume you're out you're reaching out to various church groups, labor groups, uh, fraternal organizations, mm -hmm. uh, the gamut. So, I mean, is it just by word of mouth or are you, are you actively pursuing, you know, even getting before, uh, you know, students? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you have to get permission, I guess, from boards of education to go into a school. Well, actually, there's a, a law was passed about 10 years ago in New Jersey called the HERO Act that requires education on organ and tissue donation in our public high schools. Um, the law doesn't state, though, that the high school has to work with the sharing network. So it is a very active uh, solicitation of the high schools to allow us to come in. We have about 500 volunteers with their personal stories. Um, well, that's, who, that's quite a few people then. Yeah. You can almost one for every municipality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, but it is, it is a challenge because organ donation and transplant doesn't just affect one community or one certain um, population. So we want to be in all of the places that you just named, high schools, civic organization, labor groups, um, churches. churches yeah. Yeah. 
it's uh, I'm sure you've seen so many uh, you know great stories of people that were on the on the edge, so to speak, and mm -hmm. that transplant or tissue uh, donation, you know, transformed their lives, gave them mm -hmm. a second yes. chance. Definitely. Yes. And you, you know, you you know, you you publish a newsletter too, where you highlight you know different. Uh, in fact, my uh, neighbor uh, right next door to me was recipient of uh, an organ transplant, so. You know, I see the transformation it made in her life. Yes, yes. And when people come out to our 5K event, they see that in full force. There are tears, there are, there's laughter, there are hugs. Um, it's, it's really a beautiful day to see it all come together. The transplant surgeons come out that day. The nurses in the trauma units come out that day to see, to reconnect with their donor families. And how did you get involved, Elise, yourself, Elise Glennon? Um, I started here about eight years ago. I was previously in administration at a hospital. Okay. And so I came here actually to start our foundation and to really push forward uh, the idea of bringing a philanthropic program and component to New Jersey Sharing Network. And it's been my honor and privilege to do this work uh, ever since. And Denise, I know you were involved uh, with government and public service you know, yes. before you joined New Jersey Sharing Network. I believe you worked for... Uh, former Assemblywoman uh, yes. Grace Spencer. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, and she was a definite uh, component and hero of organ and tissue donation. And she did get involved on a few things, especially the 5K. Well, what's your wish list, so to speak, if you were going to, you know, look at things, uh, Elise? I mean, you're looking for volunteers to spread the word, or you're looking for, you know, organizations to put your literature in the mailings, or you look, well, I'm sure you're always looking for financial uh, you know, support if people want to, you're a 501c3, right? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Fully charitable yep. organization. Do you have any you know, particular items that you're really uh, concerned about in terms of trying to make your program successful? I would say my number one wish, wish would be for people to take the time to learn about organ and tissue donation. It is a very personal decision to to become an organ donor. So to the extent that we can educate people. So to your point, um, if there are corporations out there that have uh, opportunities for us to do a lunch and learn, to be in their building with, as you said, literature, if we could email it out, if we can put up posters, we would love to do that. Typically what happens when we speak to any group, whether it's a group of 10 people or 100 people or 1,000 people, there is someone in the audience that had a personal connection mm -hmm. or knows someone impacted by organ and tissue donation and what ends up happening is that that person ends up becoming a volunteer for us and an additional advocate for us so to the extent we can be in groups like that um, Denise uh, we mentioned it briefly before but also in addition to high schools runs our faith-based outreach one of the things about organ donation is is about trust of the system trust of the medical community trust of the system in general and people uh, believe in their faith leaders and all faiths all religions across the board are supportive of organ donation people some people recall 50 years ago when perhaps their religion had a different take yeah, on that's organ what I donation. I thought there might have been an issue like that. Mm -hmm. So we really we we have a great group of faith leaders in this state that can help us educate their congregants uh, on this topic. So if there's anyone out there who has a connection to organ and tissue donation and a, and a strong faith, we would ask them to help partner with us to bring this message to their faith communities as well. Yeah, I, I agree with you. An endorsement from the faith community goes a long way in terms of trying to motivate people to mm -hmm. be uh, organ and tissue uh, donors. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any particular time of the year or any week or day is, that you Denise have talk about that. that you have as far as you know trying to you know bring public awareness to the issue of uh, you know uh, donor uh, and you know awareness about organ transplants mm -hmm. well in the faith-based uh, community we have uh, at the sharing network well it's national uh, the first weekend in November is donor Sabbath weekend and that's where we get a lot of information out to different uh, faith-based organizations but at the sharing network we make it a year-long event. We go anywhere at any time to any faith-based uh, event, whether it be uh, during their services or a health fair that they're having or whatever they're having. We go and we set up a table. We speak to the uh, 
participants there at the events and we let them know we bring goodies and uh, we have church fans and, and we have all kinds of things. And smile. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah, so we uh, really are pushing uh, to be relevant in that community. We also have, April is also National Donate Life Month. It's the national month for organ and tissue donation across the country. Uh, but like Denise said, we don't just wait for April. Um, we promote organ and tissue donation all year round. But what you'll see primarily in April are all of the hospitals will turn on their green lights. That's our color. So okay. uh, they'll turn on their green lights. They'll put up our posters in the lobby and they'll do a big push within the healthcare community for organ and tissue donation in April. Um, the unique thing we're doing here in New Jersey this year is a partnership with pizzerias and coffee shops. So one of the things we talked about before was the importance of talking with your family about your wishes to be an organ donor. And when you order pizza on a Friday night, if there's eight slices, typically you're sharing that pie with other people. So it's an opportunity to talk to your family. We are, we have created, last year we did a pilot program, we're rolling it out this year uh, bigger, uh, a pizza box all about organ donation. And there is a link on the pizza box to find out how many people are waiting for an organ transplant in your town. So we talked before about the number of people that are waiting nationally and across New Jersey, but what we find to be most powerful to people is to find out that in my town, there are five people waiting. In my town, there are 75 people waiting. It all of a sudden becomes very real. Reluctance uh, with folks to kind of disclose that they might want to keep that private. Uh, it's no names. It's no names. It's just the number of people waiting yeah. by zip code. There's no names on that application. But um, when you get your pizza box and you go to the website, um, you can type in your the name of your town, and it'll just say five people are currently waiting in X Y Z town. Um, it'll say two hundred people are waiting in Newark, New Jersey. It won't. It won't disclose the names. Um, the same thing will be on the coffee sleeves uh, as well. Well, do you find like uh, with uh, eyes, do you do uh, programs with uh, eye transplants? Yes, we do recover corneas for transplant as yeah. well. Well, I, uh, we've learned a tremendous amount a lot about New Jersey uh, sharing network. Uh, we're privileged to have uh, Lise Glennon uh, and Denise Peoples from New Jersey Sharing Network. One final thing, if you want to Give us a, a number or, you know, an email address to, to get in touch with you. Yes, please. Please visit our website at njsharingnetwork.org for all sorts of information on organ donation and how to get involved. Okay. Thank you once again, Elise uh, and uh, Denise. And I just want to remind uh, our viewers, if you have any issues regarding uh, my attention or questions regarding uh, state legislation, you know, you can reach me at 973 779-3125 at any time, or you can contact me at uh, Assemblyman Giblin at uh, njleg.org, and any information you may receive at, at assemblymangiblin.org. Uh, Thanks for watching the Giblin Report, and remember, if it's an issue to you, it's an issue to me. Thank you. Okay.